All right, we're live. Hey, everybody. I'm Alice Keeler. We have Tim Brzezinski, Dr. Chris Barnell, and the lovely Victoria Thompson. Thanks for joining us. So why are we here today is because I am teaching geometry, and I was trying to duplicate something in GeoGebra and hit up against a little wall. So Tim's going to help us to see how easy it is to do this, because I need to. And when you say duplicate, I'm thinking like, well, duplicating what? Because there's in GeoGebra, there's like 8,000 ways to do 8,000 different things. So uh, we got to get a little specific here. So go ahead and screen share. Let's rock and roll. I'm going to share my screen. And after Alice's questions, if you guys have questions, feel free to put them in the comments. We'll try to monitor them as we go through. So there we are at GeoGebra.org. So uh, let's start exactly where you wanted to. So what exactly, what's the goal here? What I was doing as I was creating an activity is actually modifying your activity on uh, constructing parallel lines. And I wanted to use a circle, although I know I should use the construction tool. But let's first, like if I just wanted to make a circle and duplicate it, what would I use that in? Uh, well, you could do any one of the apps, really. Let's go to the calculator suite app. You see, or just go to where it says start calculator, the blue button there. Start calculator. Right. Yeah, that's GeoGebra Calculator Suite. That is uh, going to be the most powerful app uh, on the whole platform. Uh, okay. It has everything. So now, let's actually, if you want to clean it up there, if you go to this, if you right click in the the graphics there, just right click. You can hide the um, uh, right click. You can hide the axes in the grid if you want just white space to work with, or it's totally your call. All right. You can also turn it off with the settings gear up there. Um. Wait. No grid. So sure. There. there you go. All right. Okay, so that works. So let's make a circle. That's pretty. Okay, so then I'm going to go here to this middle one with the tools, right? Yep. And yep. I... On a little. Circle with, with center. Yeah, it pops up. There we go. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so now you have a circle. And you want to. what you want to do now, I guess, is clone that circle, right? Oh, let's make it again. And remember, whenever you see how the circle tool is highlighted in the lower left, you got to turn that tool off by hitting the blue arrow, the move. Okay. Turn it off by hitting the blue arrow. Yep. That oh, wait, 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 wait. If I use one of the tools over here, because that was part of it, like I'm like, and then. Yeah, now you're going to make another circle because the circle tool is still highlighted. Okay. See how it's okay. bold? Got it. Yeah, now, now, now you can move B around, you can move A around, and you could drag the circle itself. Click the circle itself just to move it. You know, click on the actual circle. You can put it wherever you want. Okay, there you go. So now, you know, think about you yeah. know what I, what I kind of like about that. I'm sorry to interrupt there, Tim. Is no, the, go for it. The, the idea you just said to click on the circle, the temptation is to click the interior of the circle, which is not the circle, or right. the center point, which is not the circle, or the point that actually defines right. the radius. You got to click on the actual curve that is the circle. So, sure. So yeah. now we can. I'm sorry. It's just the mathematics of that is is kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, from a visual standpoint, the circle is perfect, right? So there's like no finagling that we have to do as teachers or coaches or administrators or whatever. It is like a set circle, you know, that we can manipulate and move around with. And I think that's awesome. Yeah. It's per it is perfect as pixelation will allow it to be, but it looks pretty perfect. You're absolutely right. Um, yeah, right. So I've, Alex, I... Uh, I never even used the duplicate thing, but you clicked on the you clicked on the menu there with the three dots. It says duplicate. Let's see what happens. And I didn't see that before. Oh Maybe man! Make it, but I swear. It's like my kids. I can tell them there's a twenty dollar bill right in the floor. Where you know? Right, right. <laughs> wait, wait. Now, okay. It says A one and B one. Yeah. Now it made a circle, but let's actually click on the move. The okay. So now you can move it out, right? So you duplicated the circle. It happens to have the same radius, but if you drag it out there, okay, if you move B, though, go ahead and move point B. Yeah. All right? If you move point B, though, see, now they're technically not clones of each, so they're not congruent anymore because you just changed the radius. So you cl it cloned it in its present state, but it's still an independent object. We want to clone a circle that stays the same as we want it to be like a dependent object. It depends on the size of the former circle. So let's, uh, let's delete the eight. Yeah. A1? Yeah, delete the A1, B1 circle there. Or just get rid of everything, right? You can delete that. So now, think that, let's think with, without technology. How do we actually have students 
create a circle congruent to another circle? What tool do we use? Right. What, to, what, tool, what tool's out there that, that uh, we get there? It's right in that line there with sort of circles right there, right? Mm -hmm. There you go. Compass. The compass video? Yeah, just touch the circle. Click on the circle. You want to clone. And now drag it to center it wherever you want. Okay. So now go touch the move arrow now. Remember, deselect the compass tool. Okay. And now if you move point B to alter the radius there, you see it'll uh, it'll actually change. It'll actually, those circles now are congruent. So in cloning a circle, there you go. Ah. So all your compass straight edge constructions, you really need is the circle. Really, uh, I mean, That's actually, we don't even need this. this right. trick. Oh, no, go ahead. <laughs> Um, I think there's a type of construction called, uh, I forgot what the technical name is, the Mascheroni construction or uh, where you only need a compass and not a straight edge even. I forgot the technical name of it, but um, but yeah, you, you got it right there. So what else do you want to duplicate? Polygons? Sure. Let's have Victoria duplicate the polygon. When it's okay. green, Yeah, sure. Give me two seconds because I'm going to get GeoGebra up. Yeah. While she's doing that, I'm going to show this from Neil. You know, if you create a dilation and then wants to detach it from its parent. Detach it from its parent. If you want to detach it, you would have to redefine the actual object that the children can see. Once you once you create an image, uh, an image that is a dilation of another image about a point, that image is now fixed. So unless you, what you'd have to do is to double like right click on that image and then go to object properties how it's defined and you'll have to change its entire definition um to move it to a separate place or what you could do is if you have a picture of the mona lisa i think i have activities with the mona and mona lisa in there and all you have to do is right click on the original mona duplicate and then you have another mona that's independent of the first mona if that makes sense okay so the best way to do it is just to create what alice did before is just right click duplicate it's an independent object, independent of the original. So, but yeah, is it is it then possible to dilate an object, um, that that new object that you just cloned, yeah, and, and dilate it by a by a fixed ratio? Sure, or a very or a scale or use a slider to make the scale factor. You can do anything in GeoGebra. It's all what you want. You just have to know what you want to do, and then there is always a way to do it. So let's. Let's keep, uh, now we're gonna duplicate a polygon. Victoria, you're gonna screen share. So let's add your uh, screen to the stream here. Now, yeah. the dilating, uh, duplicating a polygon is awesome for perhaps uh, tessellations when you're trying to tessellate a plane. Uh, maybe create some kind of Escher type constructions or whatever. Ooh. That gets the thing there, yeah. But um, we're just gonna show you some basics here. So let's um, let's go to the settings here in the upper right corner. Uh, so the, uh, the the gear, yep. Here, yeah, okay. You got it. Go. Yep. So let's go to let's turn off the grid and the axes, just for hazard, unless you want them there. It's your call. Yeah, it's fine. All so right. Go ahead and get rid of that. We're all okay. good. Okay. Now let's go to the tools, the circle triangle there, and we'll make a, a polygon. Let's go find the polygon tool now. Okay. Um. Let's see. So uh, I see line circles. Measures angles. Downer, Much downer. So even for me, it's like playing hide and go seek. You know, it's like right. what the heck is it? You know, so hit, I think you have to hit more there. There's uh there's lots of tools more. there. So they yep. More. It should be there now. There you go. Now awesome. Polygon. Let's click on polygon. First okay. one. Now the, the way this tool works is very simple. You just start plotting vertices, and to close it, you go back to first. So go ahead and plot points willy-nilly. There, there you go. Let's actually make a pentagon, or let's make some kind of concave king's crown thing. You know what I mean? So let's, uh, yeah. let's, yeah, there you go. Let's try like this. I like it. Perfect. All symmetry, but you know what? It's fine. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Now, what you can do now is, again, we have to turn off that tool. Otherwise, we're going to start making more polygons. So how do we do that? So would I click it again? No, that'll turn it on again. There you go. Yeah. Yep. Now you, you can now move those around if you want to change the size of the triangle. You can do whatever you want, right? Um, so that even with that concave, what is that, a hexagon or a one, two, three, four, five? So yeah, concave hexagon there. So now, um, now there's another tool that's not often used and it's so underappreciated there. 
But is there a way you could zoom in on the left side there under the polygon menu? I want people to see it uh, really well. No, keep scroll up there. Can you actually command shift plus your screen a couple times yeah, so you can zoom in? Ooh, actually, I might have to do it manually. Will it work? There we go. Yeah, yeah, that'll work. Okay. Now, um, look to the far right. There's a there's a tool that's hardly ever used, but it's so powerful. It's the rigid polygon tool, the very far yeah. right. Yeah, so let's go back and zoom out again. Okay. All right. And what this tool does is that it makes it makes a duplicate of whatever polygon exists there, but you can't change. It's a dependent object. It's a congruent. It's a figure congruent to the original. So that tool selected. Click on the concave hexagon. So actually, actually uh, undo for a second. Hit undo. There we go. Okay. Right, click on just click on the hexagon. Just click in the interior of the hexagon. Yep. Oh. Now, turn the tool off by hitting the blue arrow there. Okay. Wait. And what's now, she duplicated that hexagon. Using the rigid polygon tool? Yep. Rigid rigid is like, it's a, it's a word that kids never like, but the thing is rigid means it's fixed. See, the thing is, oh, the only points Victoria can move now are K and L. So can you move L? Victoria, mm -hmm. what is that going to do? That L down there. See, all you can do is rotate it. Right, because right? it's ruined at this point. Right, so now, fix, now that's a dependent object. You cannot change the size of that or the shape. But if you want it, you have to go back and change the original. Go back to DEI or move the original one around. See what I mean? It'll, oh, cool. yeah. Fancy. Yeah. See, the rigid polygon tool is, I mean, like, it's not really, it's there, but a lot of people don't use it. I look at the analytics sometimes, and it's like, it's so on the use. But doing something like that, especially on isometric graph paper, you know, can help students make a lot of cool tessellations with, you know, different types of polygons. And in the IM curriculum, uh, in the grade six, unit one, where we talk about test 611 for the IM curriculum, tessellating the plane, we actually did a digitally interactive version of that where we have kids use that rigid polygon tool on the isometric paper, and they have to make their own tessellation as the IM curriculum, you know, asks them to do, which is pretty cool, you know? And and mathematically, it's, it's a more, I mean, it's accurate, right? Because we... Yeah. Because all the rotations and translations and um, uh, yep. reflections are rigid transformations of the plane, right? They are exactly. They hold. They hold various things fixed. They don't dilate. Exactly. And uh, in depth. And what you could also do is, um, if you click on, let me see. Let me just. I just had a thought just occurred to me here. If you go to. Um, Oh, I just lost it. Sorry. But no, it, it, in terms of re reflections and stuff, you could totally do that and see what maps onto the other. But now, you know what you could also do is create your own activity here where I can reflect that rigid polygon, say, about a line that I make. And now I can create an activity for students to try to compose a sequence of transformations to map the original onto the – or maybe I can make – maybe I should make two rigid polygons – so kids can't and hide the original one, so kids can't mess with the original. And now I make an activity where they have to use GeoGebra tools to transform one onto the other. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does make sense. So th that's totally possible here. You would probably want to hide the original. But to go to your point, Chris, uh, Victoria, can you go to the algebra view, which is the calculator in the, uh, in the little blue up there? All right, just to show you. Mm, right here, yeah. Yeah. But you see now th that that is now cluttered with so much stuff that GeoGebra is programmed. If you scroll mm -hmm. down a little bit, right? Um, That's I think you at the bottom. Scroll up, I mean, yeah. yeah there we you go. See, you see how polygon, what, like if you scroll down just a bit more, um, or maybe, right. Right yeah. There. So all of those points are like defined with respect to the other points by rotating angles. And they're just, it's just a computer. It's just basically the devs just did the mathematics to program to see how it goes because it has the angle at the rotate, you know, whatever, but it's all done. And so now kids could take all that and build and create stuff with it. So my question is, does this correspond with the lines and the axes that we got rid of? Sure. Or go put them put them back in though. In GeoGebra. Put them back in. Go to the settings gear. Uh, so we're gonna go, I'm gonna go show grid, um, Maybe. and minor. Sure. And then I'll show axes as well. You could put D at the origin, you could put F at the origin, put anything wherever you want. Okay. Go ahead. But see Ooh, now we yeah. Grounded. Okay. Yeah. Listen, if you Let's click on be directly at the origin, which is what I'm gonna do. Yeah. Um, and then where would I find this? Like, if I were a student and I'm like, Ooh, where, where, are, where are my things? Well, where would I find it here? That's a good question. Right now, it is defaulting to to sort all those objects by construction order. 
right? That's the order which you constructed stuff in. But if you ever want to just classify by object type, there's a way to do it. You got to go to the settings here in the upper right corner. Okay. Okay. Go to settings one more time. Mm -hmm. And go to, do you see on the far right, the funky look, look cubic thing, the cubic symbol, like below the stair below. Yeah. Below, yeah. You see, okay. click on that. You see where it says sort by? Mm -hmm. Choose Choose object type. Object type. Got and it. And now you could scroll up all the points. It's alphabetical. T for last triangle. Go up S for two segments, right? Mm -hmm. You could, yeah. So whenever I need to have a bunch of stuff and I want to highlight that. Now, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to show you something really cool. Click on, go to the very far top. Hey, okay. Before you, before you do that, before you scroll past, look at the thing that says D equals. Yeah, it's zero, zero. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's right. right. at the origin where you wanted it. Right. And so every object, yeah, every object in GeoGebra has a name and it has a value. Mm -hmm. the, the, the point has a capital letter name, but the value of a point is its coordinates. The, what do you think the value of a segment is? The value of a segment in GeoGebra would be its what? Well, real quick, do you find yeah. difficulty or maybe like if I'm coaching, right? Sure. So like I would have kids where they see the segment and they see that D is this, right? Like 2.3 or one, three, four, da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. They won't scroll up to think that D is zero, zero because they're focusing on the segment. So do you have any strategies or suggestions um, or, or, or maybe advice to just make sure that students are like compartmentalizing the points versus the segments? Sure. Well, we could, I think it would be real helpful to show the labels of all the points at once mm -hmm. uh, on the grid. So let's do that. So scroll up to where you see the word points. If you right click on the word point, right click on it, Ooh. or actually click on the word point there, click on the word point and right. Okay. See how they're all highlighted now? Right click mm -hmm. somewhere, right click somewhere in the gray. Yeah, not yeah, no, no, no. I'm in the gray and left. Right click. Now go to settings. You can modify all those properties at once. And where oh, it says, nice. yep, where it says show label there. Nope. Or you could change your colors. Go ahead if you want. Yeah, um, change. let's say green. Let's just have fun. <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah. Do whatever you want. But, but you your basic, show label is here, and then what do I press? Click on name. Mm -hmm. and let's change it to uh, value or name and value. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Very, very, very cool. So now you have all the points, the coordinates of all the points are now shown, but the segment lengths are hidden. But we could show the value of the segment lengths by doing the same thing by clicking on the word segments and highlighting them all at once. I'm See like, now I mean? it's kind of annoying. I'm going to change it to person. Um, well, let's actually change the rounding because those 13 digits are annoying me. You know what I mean? Defaults are 13. So I'm so, going to go settings I'm assuming and then or actually not not point settings no get out of there so hit the x in the corner okay um if you want now the calculator suite always defaults to 13 digits kind of like a ti or like all the calculators mm -hmm. you get as many digits there but if you ever want to save your master settings for future constructions go to the gear okay in the upper right corner mm -hmm. and then go to settings and then where it says uh the settings one more time you see that gear again yes yeah and then where it says rounding. Oh, very cool. Yeah. You could do sig figs or decimal places there. Um, we'll do. I think three is good or two. Two is even nicer, right? So we'll there save. You go. So say, and you could save the font. So I like when I present, I like to make it 20 something so people can see it. You might oh. want to change your font size so we can see it better. You know like what I mean? That. Yeah. Okay. So anytime you want kids to go to an, you, you go to the app and you can actually save this. This, this, now, this is not an activity. Alice has a question about an activity. Either. This is just an app we're playing in. But if you go to File, Save, and save it just like that, and you want kids to build on your students to build on it, you can save it, get your URL, drop it in whatever LMS you use, and, you know, yeah. there you go. I like that a lot. It's very cool. So that's how you can duplicate uh, things like that, at least in GeoGebra. The, the, I find the rigid polygon tool works. If you go, I will note that if you go to GeoGebra's Geometry app, which is another app, the calculator suite I find to be the best for everybody. The Geometry app is great for elementary school kids because everything is everything is described by default as as verbal descriptors like point C, point D, and not like coordinates, say, um, to start. But the rigid polygon tool, there's a bug in the Geometry app because angles default 0 to 180 only. But mm -hmm. in this app, they default 0 to 360. So I was messing with it earlier. I'm like, but works here. So that's why I'll say for rigid polygons, avoid the geometry app until the bug is uh, fixed.
because it won't stay kind of so bummer yeah. all right what else we got going on alice is loaded with questions so she's firing away <laughs> well, so. yes so uh we uh, you know we had some slides here that you have the slides. I have the slides. I gotta get them up. Man, if, if that was just a screen cap. The screen. Cap, got them. I have a screen cap. Okay, I need the slides. I just don't remember which account that I made. I'll them. get them. Hang on. I will get them. <laughs> My phone. All right, here it is. So let me um. So let me go back here and uh, screen share. Uh, what do I gotta do here? I gotta get rid of. I gotta get. I actually got this. Stop sharing. All right, so screen share screen again. Go to application though. I'll just do the entire screen and now I'll we'll go to slides. I just can't see you guys anymore. This is um, All right, so what is GeoGebra? We've talked about that already, but GeoGebra is, or I go to present mode. GeoGebra is a, dy a dynamic mathematics application for uh, or so apps and resources really merged in one. It is a tool that is very powerful that can be used for teaching and learning mathematics and science. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we go uh, through lots of apps that you can play in that like we just did. And we have lots of resources uh, that are really interactive that the public have made. They upload it or whatever. And um, at GeoGebra, we do our best to try to make sure that good stuff appears first when you do searches and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to highlight the resources real quick. I feel like that's one of GeoGebra's strengths and definitely a saving grace for a lot of educators, especially if you're in like a virtual learning environment where if you're challenged for creating a lesson, you know, or maybe you want math to be interactive. I feel like that is definitely a strength of GeoGebra. We're not seeing that from a lot of platforms right now. Right. Um, the algebra is awesome with that. Desmos is great too with that too. Again, I'm not I'm not totally exclusive, even though I you know uh, represent you. But I also love what Desmos has done with their activity builder and a lot of activities, a lot on Twitter too. So it's really great stuff. Um, so, uh, but let's see here. We got uh, going on here. Totally right. Can I add one thing to what your comment? Of sure. Is GeoGebra? GeoGebra is also a community of people, right? There's a there are. Um, Last estimate I heard from the people at GeoGebra, there's over a hundred million users worldwide who who make use of this yes. uh, of the of the app, and they share. They are a sharing group of people, and um, so it's it's a rich community as well. Totally, totally, and people are always creating things, and we see people. Um, uh, it's just unbelievable what some people come up with. You know, I follow a lot of people on the GeoGebra platform and see stuff they create. I don't have time looking. Every day I get an email. You could choose the frequency which you get it. But it's cool to see what other people make and are, are doing. You know, it really it really is neat. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this next question is interesting. The graphing calculator portion is awesome, but I want to get more into creating shapes. I will tell you this, that as of February 6th of this past year, the graphing calculator totally changed. Um, in fact, uh Alice, why don't you share your screen or someone else can share the screen or I'll, I'll stop sharing. I'm ready. But, okay, Chris, go right ahead. This actually confused some people in the very beginning too, and some people got very frustrated, and rightfully so. I can totally understand why. But um, if, if you go to GeoGebra's homepage, right, many people get, yeah, many people sort of get confused with all the apps that exist out there. Well, I mean, there's a calculator suite. I mean, can you zoom in a little bit on where it says powerful math apps? Like uh, right there. Control plus. Uh, control plus. Control plus. Or actually, yeah. if you uh, there you go. There you go. Yeah. So if you scroll down a little bit, right? See, the powerful math apps are like right there. And so there's a 3D app. There's a CAS calculator, which is used extensively in Europe. Here in America, again, my personal opinion, we're kind of very backwards where we don't like teachers don't like CAS, not a lot of you, but there are, there's a subset of teachers that are so opposed to CAS, computer algebra, like technology, where they can solve, where tech can solve equations like photo math and graspable yeah. math and stuff. But yeah. in Europe, Abilities. huh? Oh, yeah. Now, the calculator suite, I will tell you, is moving in the direction. The calculator suite has CAS built within it. So the calculator suite, the calculator suite is like everything in, in like one. 
That's why I kind of went there. But if you just need numeric calculation and crank it out and just whatever, CAS is fine. You can't put polygons in CAS. There's no tools. You know what I mean? Uh, the geometry app is just basically the same as uh, the calculator suite. But if you click on it, things are – It's if you just click on it really quick, the geometry app, it looks like the other app. But notice that the grid and the – notice how the grid and axes are hidden. And, and look at the tools you have to start with. Aren't those natural geometry mm -hmm. tools? That you normally yeah. have that for geometry right. class, right. you know. Right. But in the calculator suite app, there were different tools that were there. Mm -hmm. So, and the only reason why I didn't use that one first is because the one of the tools had a bug in it. That's why I had it in the calculator suite. But the point is, you could do like a lot of geometric constructions with Compass Street Edge right into app as well. So, you yeah. know, everything you did. <laughs> yes. There you go. Exactly. Exactly. So. If you go, uh, if you go back a notch, uh, whatever the last the page was, okay. Um, the three, if you go to three D calculator, say right, that's a, that's we could we could do tons of webinars in and of itself series of like making like you can graph graph a segment, make a surface of revolution about the x axis. What do you get? You no, know? that's for another webinar. But the point is, it's so much fun to play in. You know, and you can create stuff just for the heck of it, Chris. Could you? We'll do it anyway. Could you just go to the segment tool, hit more? I want to show you how easy this is. If you find the tool that says segment, scroll down a little bit. There it is. Could you put a segment on that gray plane, like in the first quadrant? Like on the, yeah, like just click on one. And then, yeah, there you go. Yeah, now hit the blue, hit the arrow to deselect it because we don't make any more. Right? And so I'll scroll down just a little bit more. A little bit, a little bit. And let's go to where the surface of red, right there. I want you to click on that segment and move up, drag up. Click on that A, click on the segment in the middle. Oh, oh you just clicked on it, it made the surface rotated about the X axis. That's what we call the surface revolution. Let's undo it though. Could you do what you just did? Now, click on that and drag up. Click on it and drag. Or maybe it's not. Try again. Yep. You should be able to do it. You got a night guy like you got a highlight tool though. Highlight the surface tool one more time. Highlight the surface tool. Yep. It's like my favorite tool in the whole app. And then yeah, click on and drag up. There you go. See, can you see the dynamic? Yeah. That's a wonderful tool. You can rotate any segment, any curve about any line. You can make the line oblique like crazy, and you can start. It's so easy to do. And you can look at if you have the 3D app on your phone, you can look at it in augmented reality and start building and model the real world in AR. We could do we could do a whole series on AR. I, I, I love AR um, and using it as a tool to, to create mathematical art and to model the real world around us. You know what I mean? Now, is doesn't that look like the cone of shame from the you know that your dog wears the cone of the vet? You know what I mean? And so, yeah. And so you could rotate anything about any any line or whatever and, and do that. We could dilate that thing. We could start creating, we could start animating with sliders. We can animate it. We start creating like a, a Ferris wheel or something. Just put a bunch of spheres and start moving them. You could do that. I'm, I'm sure there, that the answer to this question is yes. So could I have, but I'd like to know how. Could I have rotated that, that segment about a different X? Absolutely, you could have. Any line you want. Now that that tool defaults to the x-axis, but can you go to the calculator for a second? Go right to that calculator there, and you see how it says um, uh, you have two of them. That's weird. Uh, interesting. So maybe one will inform you. Could you um, could you change the word x-axis to y-axis? You see where it says a hey, change x to y. Let's see what it looks like. Ooh, we actually had two of them there. I didn't realize you had two. Yeah, me either. Let me turn off this other one. There you go. Hmm. I do know that. Let's do it. Can you do about the z-axis? Have kids predict what it's going to look like. You know what I mean? Like, what is it? Gonna, if I if I make that the z-axis, which is the blue one sticking up. Mm -hmm. See, we live we live in a three D world, and I can't understand for the life of me why so many math curricula have students work only in the flat two D core plane. When I was back as a classroom teacher, I don't think we ever touched on the z-axis at all. It was always x and y. Right, but it's like that. To me, that's kind of like it's. Oh wow, why is that? That's like a flat. It's a flat. Uh, a ring, right? 
So it's like, there's no, what's the volume of that thing? Isn't it zero? You know, but to have kids just mess around and play with it, see, this will give something yeah. you never do a picture This is the most important thing I mentioned, right? How cool. There you go. So, but that that's the that the three D calculator is my favorite app of all the drafts. I mean, you probably see why, but like it's just it's so it's, it's just so much fun uh, to build and play with. You can make prisms, make nets. You could do so much with that. I mean, that that we should save that for another talk. But working in three and doing whatever to see that, and like we, we did that in two minutes, Chris. You know, and I like what we did. It's fun, but let's do another. Let's do another. Let's do three D geometry uh, here, uh, maybe in the a week or two. We can do that. Yeah, that's a good. Plan. Have a, I know we have an agenda. We have some questions here, but let's go back a little bit. Find teaser. I don't even know what happened to it. I'm trying to find the activity way that I was trying to modify. Who knows? All right. All right. Let's see. Um, what, what's what's the what's the objective? What do you want the students to be able to do? Well, I was trying to do a construction of parallel lines, and I wanted to break out into some of the sub skills. So what you had made had it all together all at once. Mm -hmm. what I'm noticing it's because I'm trying not to direct lecture, and I want to walk around and work with them. I need to have some more explanation on each of the parts. So I'm taking the applets and duplicating them, and mm -hmm. okay, I'm yeah. trying to do that, and I felt like I was hitting up against a wall. Okay. Can I ask this question? Um, is it like, do you want to use, are you talking construct the parallel lines using the compass and straight edge, or can we just make a line and use the parallel line tool in GeoGebra and be done in a second? Like, what do you, what's the actual objective? Well, uh, I was trying to do it with a circle, right? So it's um, the compass straight, okay. Yeah, like the compass, I, I wasn't, okay. I guess I'm not familiar enough with GeoGebra that I was saying should you use the compass? And I was just trying to duplicate that circle. So um, now I know how. Yep. Let's go. Actually, you let's have you screen share. Is this Chris's screen still? Yep. So let me let's let's take it out. All right, and uh, let's have Alice screen share. And Alice, I'll, I'll bring you to a template that uh, that has all the construction tools in it, and not all the others. All right. Go to GeoGebra's homepage. All right. Click on GeoGebra at the top of the corner there. Okay. I'm on the homepage. Thing. Okay, there you go. Scroll down a little bit. Uh, where it says remote learning templates. Yep. Second one in. Um, if you scroll down just a little bit, a little bit, keep going. Keep going. I haven't pushed in the team to like, I want to be able to build things. I put it side by side, you know, so vertically down. Oh, by the way, your you asked about coins. There you go. The coins, remember the coins you can make change, drag and stuff. Um, right there. Let's go there. Now, let's go. To, you want to make your own activity in this. So let's go to, nope, let's go to the three dots in the upper corner. Mm -hmm. Copy activity. Yep. Just like Google Docs, file, make a copy. Call it what you want. We'll keep it, whatever. Um, now, you can actually, if you click on the pencil, okay. So the pencil in the upper right corner there to edit it. Yeah. So scroll down a little bit. Okay. And go to edit applet. Yep. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Now let's actually make, let's actually make a line. Okay. Make any line. Okay. And put a point off the line. So go to the point. Mm -hmm. Oh. No, you got to turn that tool off there. Undo. Okay. Point. Oh, yeah. Yep. Point. Yeah. There you go. Now hit the move arrow. Uh, the, actually, this is the, this is GeoGebra Classic app. So this is the this is like the older app, but it's, it's the same thing. So now position that line in the point wherever exactly where you want it, so so that we could see it. If now if you want to actually keep them fixed, you could fix them. If you right click on if you click on B, uh, you can um, actually you know click on click on B there. Not right click, just click on B itself, okay. and go to go to the style bar, which is you see the circle triangle in the upper corner, right corner. Click the lock. Got it. See in the newer apps with the blue background, GeoGebra has like that, it pops there, but in the classic app, it's just in one spot. Click on the A, all right? Click on the A, point A there, and do the same thing if you don't, if you don't want it to move, okay? And if you click on C, 
click on it so it doesn't uh, lock it so it doesn't move. Okay. We could do the same for the line, even though the line shouldn't move. But let's click. Uh, do the, no, not yet. Do it for the line. Yep. And there. Now you know what the benefit of that is, is that if you hit the trash can, you cannot delete it now. So some kids may accidentally. Oh, whoops. You know what I mean? Try try deleting B. You can't do it because it's fixed. Uh, See what I mean? So anything the kids create, they won't be able to do. If it's if it's if it's unlocked, it'll go away. So whenever I want to have something that the kids that cannot be changed, for I gotta add it. You know what I mean? You can do it that way. Um, so hit done. Okay. And now you can actually put your directions up above in the app. What do you want the kids to do? Construct a line that is use the or use the tools there to construct. We won't, won't tell them how to do it. I want them to make. And I want to do an angle, right? Well, the way there's a couple of ways to make the line parallel to the other. You could do the, the typical way is to make a, a pair of corresponding angles congruent with a congruent angle construction, you know? Some kids have done the alternate barriers, you know, some kids there's a couple of different ways you could do it, but that's that's popular method with you know by a compass straight edge there. But use the you could just say use the tools because all those tools in that cleaned up toolbar are the compass and straight edge really tools, plotting right. points, lines, you know what I mean? You can't cheat, if you will. All right, so let's scroll down a little bit. There isn't the built-in uh, construct a parallel line through this point tool in this um, applet that you've created. I removed it, yeah. I customized the toolbar to give only kids what they needed. You know, right. And so limiting the toolbar, we could talk about, and it's very easy to do. Um, it's an extra cup, two or three minutes. You could take the tools out you don't want, put them back in, the ones you do. So let's hit done there. Um, now you, yeah, you, okay, there you go. And so do you want to delete the others or keep them in? It's up to you. Um, a bunch of them. Yeah, it, 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 again, remember that was a temp, those are templates. Those are just four of the same thing, but you could take as many as, or leave as, you know what I mean? Okay. As you want. Well, so, so I want to copy that because I wanted, woo. Well, you might want to disable pan and zoom, but you don't have to, but there you go, let's copy it. Right. Well, so yeah, I just wanted to have it build up to it. Um, okay, great. Yeah, so let's save it and close it. And now for the heck of it, I'll, if you create a GeoGebra class, you can watch me work in real time since I'm at home and you're at school. That's so good. not yet, no, that's the original. You gotta go back to your Google Drive and GeoGebra. Remember where that is? Where's your GeoGebra Google Drive? Oh, that is the original, okay. So I have to go to profile. Yep. And it would be down here. And That's then. it. Yep. So click it. Okay. Now you can create class. And if you drop okay, the like link, yep. Call the class whatever you want. Remember, a class is more like a live lesson versus a class, right? Where we're gonna oh. interact with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so now if you want to drop in fact, if you want to drop that you that into everybody in the things. We can we can all go there and just play around and doodle in it. Yeah. Yeah. Throw it in the throw it in the social I media. Know, I do have four minutes before I have to prep for my next meeting, but I can do it for as long as I'm here. Sure. We see where your priorities lie. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll miss you. I don't have one either, so we'll miss you. Um, no, I get it. So let me. Uh... So there we go. Or actually, keep that in the comments, please, uh, Alice. For us, us for. Thank you. All right. So let's see. Uh, I don't have both of my screens up for today, but I can do split screen. I got some side by side. Private chat. There we go. Yep. Perfect. I'll go ahead and join. I'm joining. I'm in. And I'm in too. Says use the tools, but. Sorry, I've got Dr. Brownell. And okay, there's my two tasks. Wow, something fell apart for me. So what I can see, and, and maybe it will require me to refresh my day. Oh no, no, never mind. I can find it. So I kind of had like a weird like blank spot on there, but once I refreshed the page, I was able to get it. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So I see Tim in task one. Are you guys in task one or task two? I'm in task one. Task one. Yeah, the, the, 
the same task, really. I mean, the directions were just to use the tools. So I'm like, okay, I'm using the tools. So um, right here, oh. that you can see. Uh, there, we go. there we go. I needed to refresh. That's okay. No, you're fine. It should update every few seconds there. But see, you could click on, I'm on task one there. But again, any changes I make, you'll be able to see really in real time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can see how many students have started and see we're kind of where we're at, you know. So this this is GeoGebra Classroom's a beautiful interface because it eliminates you can actively engage your students and formatively assess them at the same time, right? Without the hassle of screen sharing. I mean try to do this on paper at home with a compass, it's a nightmare. You know? I so, have compasses at my school and I'm thinking I don't use one outside anyway, so yeah. yeah. Actually, the technical name for it should be a pair of compasses because of the same reason why they call a pair of pants. But everybody calls it compasses. <laughs> they don't call it a pants. You know? Seriously. All right. But, um, I do yeah. have to hop off. Um, but let's do this again soon. And thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Thank yeah. you. It was fun. Bye. Have a good day. Bye. You too. Bye, Victoria. Actually, I have to go as well. All right. All right, you well, Adios, Dr. B. accomplished our goal and answered a few more questions. So until next cool. time, that sound about right? So next so, time, we got, can we play in 3D? Got it. We got to play in 3D for a little while. A lot of fun. All right. I am down Sounds for good. that. Cool. All right. Have a great day, everybody. Bye. Bye.